Life at Five. It's offer review, and we've got some issues and some solutions to some offers and some confusing in game messaging, which we're going to go over right now. And uh, the two issues are right here is that Zombie Juggernaut is out, and he's a dark promotion credit character, and the in game notification said that he was going to be in the Elite Store. Nope. And then also. If you buy the $100 offer, these orbs right here, you really want to save until tomorrow because there's an event. And so we did get some messaging from Archangel. We're just going to read it. Uh, today, the offers for Zombie Juggernaut went live as advertised in the blog. These offers are viral orbs, which contain character shards for Zombie Juggernaut, Iron Man, and Crimson Tombstones. Earning Crimson Tombstones grants points for the unkillable force milestones that begins tomorrow. So here's the solution. Um, if you if you open the orbs, you don't get credit for tomorrow. And they said the team will compensate players with milestone points equal to the progress that they should have earned from the orbs they opened. And then the second issue has to do with um, him not being in the Elite Store, and they're not going to put him in the Elite Store until, at a minimum, after the leaderboard uh, event that awards uh, Red Stars. They, they, they almost always wait until after the leaderboard event. because, And the reason for that is that they put it in the Elite Store, and you buy it with Dark Promotion credits, and then you do well on the leaderboard, and instead of getting refunded back dark promotion credits, they refund back elite fours, which is garbage. All right. So players who spent power cores to refresh the store while the erroneous inbox message was active today will be compensated. So if you've been spamming the refresh button looking for zombie juggernaut dark promotion credits, it's not there. So they're going to refresh back. They're going to kick back the... Uh, they're going to kick back the the dark promotion credits. Now, I want to read this, but before I read this, I want to give some context of what I think is happening in the game, and then we'll just read some of the issues, and I have some comments on these issues. So this is from the Player's Voice movement, and uh, the there has been, in my opinion, a top-down change in the way that uh, Marvel Strike Force is addressing the community. And what I mean by that is that they are listening to Reddit. They are listening to Facebook. They are listening to their Discord mods. They are listening to their Discord server. They're listening to the Envoy and the Envoy chats. And they're also listening to the player voice movement. And I don't know why that is, but it feels like to me that there is a top-down change. Uh, it could be... Uh, the acquisition from Savvy. It could be the introduction of the player voice movement. A uh, birdie told me that um, one of their sister games over at Scopely, the Monopoly Go, is wildly successful, and they attribute their success to listening to the players. There were some early development issues with that game that got corrected by listening to the community, and they made changes in the game. And now the game has gone bonkers. So that's what I heard. That's what the word on the street is, is that there is a top-down change over there. I think it is good to remain skeptical. I am still skeptical that it's going to be meaningful to the community, but I I'm optimistic. Now, I want to read this because these topics right here are not unique to the council. Um, I'm seeing similar topics being pushed and talked about at length. Also in Envoys, and I have issues that I've brought with them as well. Share detailed feedback about the seven-year star farmability plan and diamond reactions. Questions and concerns from the player voice community and beyond. This includes questions for the measure of engagement needed, feedback about store costing, and a commitment to hold Scopely accountable for moving forward. So what that means is that last week they introduced and, and implemented, actually they implemented changes to acquisitions for uh, yellow stars and um, the community is skeptical that they're going to follow through. I mean, one of the claims they made is that, you know, free to play players should have characters at seven yellow stars with, uh, in, you know, with moderate engagement after six months. We will see, right? 
Share negative feedback about the difference between the free and paid track strike and battle pass. Encourage a better balanced pass. So I want to say a good thing and a negative thing about this. If you're going to spend $80 on Marvel Strike Force, that is $20 for the battle pass. There's four a month, so one a week. There is extreme value. So I want to applaud Marvel Strike Force for actually giving us a reason to buy these and drastically making it more valuable for the people that want to spend. And uh, I was not buying these. Uh, well, that's not true. I used typically bought the strike, but I didn't buy the battle pass. I And, and if the character was not something I didn't need, I ignored these. But I've gone from buying maybe like one a month to probably buying all four if they continue to have the value. And the problem is, is that the spread between the free track and the paid track is pretty immense. And I think it would be good if, if not that they, you know, I'm glad that they increased the value on the paid track, but I feel like the spread is pretty wide and you don't get a lot on the free track. And this is going to create some disparity between the free to play players and the spenders. I will say this, if you're going to spend $80 on Marvel Strike Force, you know, the first $80 you should spend is going to be on the strike pass and the battle pass. The, the value is immensely better than it once was. So this is a, a good topic. Share the community desires to see the return of war plays. I don't know why this hasn't happened yet. I was under the impression that this should have been impl implemented already. And this was a hot topic and discussion at the summit. And I left the summit thinking that they were gonna turn it on right there after we left the summit within an hour and it was gonna be working the next day. I'm being a little bit sarcastic, but I did think it was gonna be something implemented within a week or two. And I'm highly surprised. Now, war replays was only the uh, for your own alliance. Like you don't get to see what the other alliance did on your attacks. I mean, you don't get to see that replay, but we're talking about for your teammates. teammates. So this was war offense only. And you know, not not you know, your your the your your opponent's replays, just your own alliance's replays. And and I thought that that was going to happen. We'll have to see. Share the community desire to see updated availability of tier gear by updating the current challenges. Yes, work directly with Scopely this week on the compensation package players received during the unexpected extra downtime. I know Dorky Dad was involved with that quite a bit as well. On the Envoy side, discuss content for, for current and future game modes and shared feedback. Discuss console playtesting current and future game modes and shared feedback. And I'm, I'm involved with that as well. So, um, I'm hoping that the game is headed in the right direction i think it is prudent to be cautiously optimistic but this feels like a top-down change like the direction is coming from someone up very high telling hey you guys need to engage with the community you need to listen to your players or you're not going to have any players if you keep pissing them off i feel like there's somebody over there saying that at the top 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 also add iso counter assist info to kits um, so this was a discussion that I talked about at the summit at length, specifically with the, the website team, TyJ and Toxie. And I just don't understand why it's not in game. Sometimes this information on new player kits is only found in the blog post or the PDFs that are in the Envoy videos. And then the information is lost forever unless you're able to go in the JSON files. We used to have access to this on msf.gg, but that is no longer happening and it is non-existent in the game and frankly it's garbage how are we supposed to to pick our isos on characters unless we know what the iso counter assist info is specifically if you're going to want to pick striker I, I just this just baffles me absolutely baffles me that this is not in game also marvel strike force made it into an asman gold video earlier today they were talking about Sedano Mac, and it says right here, Marvel Strike Force accidentally made fun of their top whale, so he quit, and they sent an apology video to him. He tried to fly him down and show him that they are working on something good. So Asmin Gold video had a maybe a minute long clip around the start. It's around the 19 minute, not a big thing, but they talk about Marvel Strike Force briefly in an Asmin Gold video. Interesting. Also, I'll put a link to this in the description. This is a a uh, highly useful war counter guide that it was created by Updog. 
I know one of the more popular teams that have been out there are this this Bifrost plus Dormammu team right here. And uh, yes, the, the Weapon X counter definitely does struggle against this team. So I, I really appreciate the timeliness of this information here. So a link to this will be in the description. Big shout out to Updog for making that. I wonder how many people are having a problem like this. I wonder how long my incursion energy has been capped at 120. I know that I saw this post and immediately went and spit my incursion energy. And yes, I was at 120. Fix your game. Fix your game. I, I mean, uh, also, um, the reason why you want to do that is because you can get dark promo credits. And I know this is a an issue for a select few, but there was a a cap increase to dark promotion credits. Um, and now the new cap is 12,000. This was a truly horrible system that if you exceeded the amount of dark promo credits, they were converted to Ultimus food. Very terrible. Also, I was at TwitchCon and I know this was a big headline, but I just wanted to go over it again. Um, they're doing the next legendary, which is going to be Green Goblin, a little bit different than let's say Nova or Black Cat. Uh, we knew about the new Avengers being a requirement to get uh, Green Goblin, but it also is rebirth, but they're changing the way this works. And this is to be expected as the game progresses, getting legendary characters is going to become more and more unpredictable and increasingly difficult. I do think they are moving away from the apocalypse model, but it is the natural progression of Hero Collector games that I've played that difficulty in unlocking legendary characters gets more and more difficult as time goes on. Let's read this together. Be able to recruit the next legendary character, Green Goblin, in his forthcoming trials, and we have some details to help you prepare. You need powerful squads of new Avengers and or Rebirth for difficulties five through seven. So I feel like that is the way that Nova and Black Cat was. There was two teams and you you just had to do it here's the difference however if you're attempting difficulty eight and above to bring home major rewards you need to bring both teams as mission nodes will call for each trait individually so to unlock green goblin you'll you know well to unlock i don't think i think you'll be able to unlock green goblin regardless of whatever one you develop probably you could avoid one team or the other and probably still get enough points to unlock. But if you're trying to compete and get as high as possible yellow stars on Green Goblin, the optimal strategy is gonna have a well-built rebirth and a well-built new Avengers. So that's a different, you know, that's a divergence from uh, the, the trials that we had for Nova and Black Cat. Apocalypse or Secret Defenders? So here's the thing, I just wanna point this out. Apocalypse has very different requirements than DD6 or the Secret Defenders in your arena. Apocalypse needs Blue ISO 5 gear tier 17 to get a big boy Apocalypse. My suggestion for Blue ISO 5 is to focus on the 23 characters and apply Blue ISO 5 to those 23 characters first. You can still upgrade your secret defenders. You can take your secret defenders as high as you want. Gear tier 18, blue ISO 4. But I would put blue ISO 5 on the horseman teams and, you know, the weaver and all that stuff. It's 23 characters for Apocalypse. So it's, it's they're different requirements. You don't need blue ISO 5 to go into Dark Dimension 6 or to have success in the arena. You'll do better in the arena, of course, that's true. But to get a big boy apocalypse, you have to have those 23 characters at blue ISO five. And so my suggestion is to only put blue ISO five on those characters first. Once you finish those 23 characters, then you can start working on other characters, uh, specifically secret defenders. Thanks for increasing the character shard drop rate. So we talked a little bit about this earlier in the video. Uh, but yeah, this is the the the, the yellow stars uh, and acquisition of shards. Was, I, I was able to finish off like three characters this week. Felt really good. Um, this was a welcome change and an act of goodwill uh, with the introduction of the diamond star system. 
Alliance donation boxes missing. I had this issue. So something went wrong where it didn't claim them and get points towards the event like it was working the other day. It did not happen correctly yesterday. I thought I just didn't understand how the event worked. And then several people here in chat on Twitch and then also on Reddit uh, had a similar issue where it didn't give credit for the event. Uh, this was reported to the developers and the developers acknowledge receipt of this issue and it has been passed up the appropriate chains. Um, let's go into offers. We got a couple offers here to look at. I just want to point out that there is a gold offer almost every day that does not have the 1 million gold for $5. It's basically just the eight gold orbs for $5. And then the 1 million gold is only on Sundays. I want to say this though. I'm having a problem with training materials. So um, there has been an influx of gold and that has caused me to deplete all of my training materials. And there's two solutions to that. I, I spend more gold on gear <laughs> or get more training materials, right? So we just got a lot more gold, right? I, I feel like I got like an extra 20 million gold for various reasons over the last month, let's say. And now I've got 25 million gold in my account and no way of upgrading characters because I ran out of trading materials. And I suppose that would be a non-event if I was just purchasing, you know, gear with the goal, but it is what it is. Now I wanna go over, there's a couple offers for Elite Sixes. So um, anchor pricing now on Elite Sixes is right here. Elite Six for $10. Um, I'm not finding Elite Sixes to be as valuable uh, as they once wore. You know, I definitely am more interested in elite sevens, but if you're in the market for elite sixes, this is the standard pricing. Now there's a couple deals that may be better for you. Right here, this is an elite six for $15. So for $5, you're getting all this extra stuff. I don't really think either of these deals are that great. Uh, I'm more interested in something like this right here, which is basically two elite sixes and we got the new Iron Man. I like this. I mean, I think that's the purpose of this offer and this offer solely is to make this offer look very good. You know, you get two elite sixes and um, then the Iron Man for $10. Do what you got to do. Also, if you do not have Zombie Meyer Man unlocked already, I highly recommend um, unlocking Zombie Iron Man. Zombie Iron Man is different than most characters in this game because um, he's very much kit based. Uh, all characters do better with higher red and yellow stars and gear, but zombie Iron Man can be extremely effective when paired with Hela. Um, and, let, and, and we've got the zombie juggernaut uh, orbs went out to, for sale today and it looks like the release for him is gonna be nearly identical to last year's zombie Iron Man release. That is not necessarily true of Zombie Jugs, which I don't know if we're going to call Zuggernaut or Zugs or I don't know what to call them. Zugs. Oh my God. Zombie Juggernaut. I, I kind of like Zuggernaut. Well, we'll have to figure it out. But anyways, you need stats on him. Uh, he doesn't have this like auto revive mechanic. He does have a revive mechanic if he's able to get to five charges, but there's ways of getting through him one way or another. But Zombie Iron Man is great at low stars low gear he's kit based and I, I do recommend him and i think if you do not have him locked i would consider looking into that and then we've just got um a relatively uh five dollars for 50 character shards let me know what you think in the comment section are you happy with the game the way the game is going happy with the better access to yellow stars i'm skeptical but i do think the game is for the first time in a long time is headed in a better direction all right thanks for watching bye for now